variations in gender. This is where identity comes in. Because till now, everything that we have talked about, all the variations, right? Chromosomal, gonadal, phenotypic, all of that was sort of going beyond our control. We don't get to pick what chromosome we are born with. We don't get to pick what internal sex organs we have, what secondary sexual characteristics we have. None of that we get to pick. What we get to pick is when we have identity. And this is where neurobiology comes in. More than just anatomy, more than just your gonadal anatomy, neurobiology, neuroscience comes in. So the binary classification was that you either identify as a male or a female. This is traditional. Are you a boy or a girl? For the longest time, even uh, exam papers didn't have a third option. It was either you were either a male or you're a female. But now you know that even from a chromosomal perspective or from a gonadal perspective or from a phenotypic perspective, there are so many, many variations. And I haven't even started talking about all the variations. I've just given you a few examples. There are so many variations that can happen that now we realize that a binary classification ignores a lot of things. So then let's look at what a non-binary gender classification looks like. So at the extremes, we can say male and female because in the midst of all of this, let's not forget that this still exists. Okay, so then one thing I've realized is that we tend to go in, the pendulum tends to swing in extremes. So even in our acceptance of non-binary, we want binary. And sometimes uh, we forget about this. But anyway, in the extremes, we have male, and we are female. Now, you can have multiple things in the middle. And this is the spectrum. This is the gender spectrum. So, this is identification. Okay, so somebody identifies as either male or female, or somebody can identify as multiple genders. Somebody can identify as neither male or female that's it they won't say what i am all they'll say is i am neither male or female they could have both which is called fluid gender fluid or they could have neither no not neither they will say no gender which is a gender and one of the common terms to use for all of this is transgender. So to put it very simply, there are two types of gender. One is if you identify with the gender you were assigned at birth or you don't identify with the gender you are assigned at birth. And this is a good classification. So everyone is assigned a gender at birth till now. It may not be the case in the future, but till now everybody is assigned a gender and you can either identify with it saying, yes, my parents did the right thing. I do identify with that gender or no, my parents and society were wrong in, in assigning that gender. In fact, I am another gender. So if you do identify, that is called as cisgender. And if you don't identify, then that is transgender. And being a transgender is something that I don't think anyone except somebody who's gone through it can really um, understand because gender is something that you have grown with you have been brought up with and that idea you can't even try and imagine what that must be like that you don't identify with the gender that you are 
assign that bird because it is so intertwined with every decision you have made since then that it is very fundamental so transgender people have to go through this they go through this whole life of or go through this whole experience of being discordant with the identity that they are given this idea of being discordant is called as gender dysphoria that is that discomfort you feel because of this because you don't identify with your assigned sex at birth and that discomfort that somebody feels is what is called as gender dysphoria now there are there is a milder variation to it which is called as gender variant so for example if i was assigned a male sex at birth but while growing up I realize that I identify as a female but it's not causing me that much discomfort because sometimes I do identify as a male the the idea is gender variant is that there could be a tendency towards ident identifying as someone else but not much but gender dysphoria is I am uncomfortable I this is the the description that is given is that I don't fit in my own body because my own body reminds me of a gender that i don't identify with so this is what gender dysphoria means and interestingly it was found that almost 80 percent of people who had gender dysphoria were men and men were affected with this much more than women and one of the explanations that was given was that if there is a woman who secretly identifies as a man then there is a lot more of outlet for that woman to explore a life as a man for example a woman can wear a suit go out and have behave like a man and society wouldn't mind so much but if a man identifies as a woman and he even goes a little bit towards that side starts to starts to wear a dress there is immediate reaction from society the society would much rather accept women in men's role than men in women's roles so this is all traditionally the case of course things are changing a lot now but it's important for us to understand how things have come about and so this is what uh, gender dysphoria means and uh, just to give you a brief idea about the neurobiology of it there are there is one main aspect that i want you to know is that the area of the brain that deals with body image body image is involved and a couple of other areas it's called as bed striata terminalis there are some differences there are some neurobiological differences in people who identify as gender dysphoria so non-binary is when you don't fit in in that binary classification and transgender comes in that transgender can mean both of these in my understanding there is one is the overarching term of transgender which is that you are discordant with your assigned uh, sex at birth but there is also the what you are saying of transgender which is you have changed from one to another so a transgender male is was somebody who was previously a woman but is now a man or a transgender woman was previously a man but is now a woman so that is also one way of looking at it. so i would rather keep non-binary as the umbrella term and transgender to mean what you are saying what is pronounced in the binary classification man and woman and when you address them you say he him his and a woman will address them as she her hers and when you're talking to them directly you'll say you and that is gender neutral 
but when you're talking to them talking about them in third person you will use these pronouns and the problem is that it's like if someone calls you by another name if your name is suresh and somebody constantly refers to you as surekha for example what they are doing is they are ignoring your identity and they are changing your identity to something else and if that is a threat to you and if they are saying it in a way that is threatening to you then that what it does is it activates your amygdala and eventually it leads to depression because anything that questions or threatens your identity is a personal threat anything that threatens your identity is your personal threat so every time somebody refers to someone in the wrong pronoun it can be a personal threat so what can be the pronouns that you use you use gender neutral pronouns which is they them and theirs and now the way the conversation is going is that you anyway use this a lot of times we say that uh, i don't know where they are instead of i don't know where she is or i don't know where he is you can say i don't know where they are and this is a good way of saying that i am not going to assume their gender so now as we get more and more inclusive and as our own knowledge of this grows the just like when you meet someone and you ask them oh hi what's your name you because why do you ask somebody's name because you want to identify them you want to remember them just like you ask someone's name you ask for preferred pronoun and it takes what two seconds more one second more hi what's your name what's your preferred pronoun they'll say my name is this my preferred pronoun is this and what this means is that you will not misgender anyone just like you don't want to call somebody by the wrong name you don't want to call somebody by the wrong pronoun why would you if you know that it is causing hurt and you know that it is causing them depression why would you what's the problem so this is where conversation is going towards we haven't really seen it happen much to be honest in india especially um i haven't seen this conversation happening but what i think is that it is going there and uh, it is good to know it is good that this is what is expected because in general i feel that empathy is very important because what you are doing is you are questioning someone's identity and to the brain when someone questions your identity it is like social outcasting and you don't want to socially outcast anyone because that's not what we want to encourage in ourselves as a society and the main thing about identity is that you can think of it like a building it is you are constantly building your identity and it is like blocks upon blocks and the thing with gender is that it is one of the first blocks that you put so even before you have a say your parents have already said is this a boy or a girl so that is the first question that we ask each other and all your other sense of identities are sort of built on top of that so if somebody is questioning this very very primitive basic aspect of your identity then everything else will be shaky everything else will be under question so you don't want to put anybody through that sort of distress so just ask for pronouns if you enjoyed learning neuroscience of sexuality then do like the video subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click that bell icon so that you can get a notification the next time i upload a video thank you